Dr. Tuna Mall is here today. Gonna put a spicy two step. Well, guys, car's about to go on the trailer and oil and oil. You know what happened? I was worried we were gonna have to pull the trans. So I got to looking, and the oil pressure sensor definitely leaking. get on the wedge to leave for race week tonight. Dr. Tuna Mall is here today. Gonna put a spicy two-step and make her idle right and build that boost curve and get on the trans bake right so that everything's super healthy when I'm on my race setup. He's gonna do two different tunes. He's gonna do one that's for the street and another one that's for the track. But that's it. I got the car completely put together and I got all my stuff in here. It's ready. It's ready to leave. Okay. See you later. This time around, I'm going a little bit lighter in the car. You can see all the crap that I brought last time. I made a power inverter to charge our phones. I got a kit to fix brake lines. A ton of fittings, fuel filters, coolant hosing, even some drill bits. I mean, this is hilarious. I mean, for my first race week though, I was trying to be over prepared and we were over prepared, but it was so much stuff to take in and out of the car in each race. So going a lot lighter this time, trying to be a lot more efficient with what we're bringing. Alrighty, Dr. Tuna Mall putting a spicy tune up on the car. Pepper out for a little rip. Nate, Dr. Tuna Mall, wants a little data log. He got the idle right because we did change up the cam and the heads on the car, so it wasn't idling where we wanted to. So we got that right. I'm gonna go get some data for him, bring it back, and so he's gonna have two different tunes. He's gonna have one for pump gas and one for E90. So he's gonna have me dial. If you were up in it to try to get the 10, it'll go there now. So what, are we gonna put a cap for when I leave the line? That's why I wanted you to kind of stand on it just to see yeah. where it would stop at. So let me pull up the log real quick and we'll see. I don't know, look at my throttle position because sometimes I flick its wedged against the, the well here. Okay. Had a little wiring issue going on. Well, pretty much expected on this thing, but. That was only 86% throttle. You wanna do it again? Yeah, it held right at, right at, right, so on this boost builder that I set up, it pulls timing out, and then I set a wall at the end of it, basically, so that it can't do that. So at 10.4 pounds is where I had the wall shut, and it was holding 10.8 pounds. Okay. So yeah, we can do it again if you want to, like, floor it, floor it, and we'll just make sure that it okay. does what I'll it's floor it. To. We had this issue last race week where I wasn't flooring it. <laughs> Dude, these size 13s, I tell you what, when you push on this pedal right here, it gets like wedged. And then I, but I really just need to go like this. You need to set up some race quip shoes. They're skinnier. They just hold your foot so you don't get them caught up on stuff. Are those That's like the wear. ones you wear at home? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> those are my nighttime slippers, you know what I mean? Wake oh, up, yeah. take a piss, put your race clips on, and go take a piss. <laughs> 
you get there faster, you know what I mean? Yeah, sometimes I wear my race suit to bed when, you know, I want to feel real comfy and I feel like somebody's hugging yeah, me and really, I feel lonely. If it's like negative 40 out, I'll wear mine because it's Nomex and you'll <laughs> die. <laughs> the only time you don't mind being hot exactly. in your race suit. Okay, you want to do it one more time? Yeah. to the moon <laughs> so we'll take some dome out of it yeah because i know you guys are trying to get to a certain number uh we just wanted to see all of it it went to where i where it's being targeted to is where it went to which was 12 you have 14 on the uh okay yep yeah see before i think my soul will leave my body <laughs> <laughs> the man said my soul is gonna leave that. my body at the start line don't worry, I'll stand behind and catch it. <laughs> Put fast, it in your pocket. Fastball, pitch it back to the car. Yeah, we'll do eight. Get back to my girl. I'll knock you down a little bit, and then that way you can actually get down the track. Yeah, hey, dude, check out this Hell Yeah Brother parachute mount. Dude, sick. Then, radios in the this way. is race mode. I don't know if you can see this. Race yeah, down. Mode with it down. And then I do the old flathead, undo the old rose clampers. About one or two timers. Mm -hmm. Street mode. Big street car guy. Really thinks street of everything. Car. Nope. I would have that in an easy location to grab it if need be. Well, that's the first street. Street mode. You never know, dude. You might need to do a freaking 200 mile, 200 mile an hour flyby. My goal is to pull the parachute every pass that I'm doing 80 miles an hour or 180. You're gonna regret that <laughs> first one. <laughs> you ever pack one of these bad boys? Uh, I have not. That's why oh. you're going to regret it. Give me power. <laughs> well, what did you just say? I said, are you going to hang some tools in here or something? Hey, it's support. It's pegboard? <laughs> it's not a bad idea, but it might mess with the paint on the outside. Yeah, you hang it's, hammers and... It's on this one, too. And Dude, we originally named it... Originally named it... <laughs> on your dad's lawn equipment. <laughs> we originally named this car Tetanus. Remember that? Because yeah. of this? But yeah, you'd be all right. Dr. Pepper's a little more fitting. Dr. It's the right, right color. We Ready? can try the uh, simmer down version now. Simmer down. <laughs> Do it for wheelies. So for wheelies, don't turn that wheel at all. She's keep already cockeyed by about 45 degrees. That's fine. You, you should just keep her that way. All right? You start rump, 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 the gas, but once it's falling, whap, wide open again. I like it. Do you whap? Do you whap the throttle down to zero, or do you do like a no, half you just whap? You'll know. You'll, it'll feel right. Whatever feels right, you just rump, 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 rump. Because if you come down and off the gas, it's just gonna go. Boom. I see. I see. Okay. The way your oil pan's set up, you'll leave it right where it hits. Damn. Yeah. Okay. She ready? She's ready for pump gas. Okay. Time to switch her over. All right. I switched this car over to pump gas. I just switched these uh, quick disconnects that I had for. I don't. I don't even know. It must be like an oil pressure gate or switch. And I have this one. You switch it over here. And that turns uh, the pump on in the back instead of the pump on up front. And then I've got quick disconnect lines here that uh, will just quick disconnect my race setup to my pump gas setup. Well, guys, the car's about to go on the trailer and brought it back from a little test drive so they could get some data for the street tune and oil and oil. So it's coming for the rear main seal again. Obviously what I did didn't work the first time, so I'm gonna pull the trans and fix her up. I already have a brand new rear main seal cover everything, so let's do this.
definitely leaking because I saw the pattern on the ground. There's two spots on either side. So I went to start unbolting the trans and one of the uh, bell housing bolts had oil all over it. So I looked up, sure as heck, oil pressure sensor doesn't have an O-ring. Just like the issue I had when I uh, put the valley cover on to begin with. So, hey, you know what? At least we're not pulling the trans. At least we're not pulling the intake. Easy fix. Now this car is 110% dialed. You are never gonna forget a single O-ring on a valley cover ever again. In my no, life. won't. Ever again. All right, where's that piece go? Where's those? He's gonna have nightmares about valley cover O-ring gasket. <laughs> you wake up in a cold sweat. I'll see that. Ready to go on the wedge. She's ready, people. Although I was gonna leave it, I decided it'd be better to fix the oil leak before we left. Luckily, it just ended up being the oil pressure sensor. So I unscrewed it and the uh, O-ring ended up being too small. So we loaded it up with some RTV, got her back together. Car's not leaking oil anymore, but also need to let the RTV set for a bit. So if you guys like today's episode, there's gonna be a ton of content coming out next week. Every day I'm gonna be posting a video all right, race week 2.0 out leaving Oklahoma City and traveling through Kansas and Texas. So. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. Today I'm in a CE course in Miami with some legends in the industry for their casework. I got Dr. Fien over here and Dr. Putterman. Today we're gonna be working on some pig jaws, doing some guided bone generation, and then we'll get back to the car action. So come follow along. All right, so I know this is a little bit graphic, but this is what it looks like when you take a tooth out, and what we're learning today is this technique to re-graft this area. If any of you are wondering what bone graft looks like, it looks like a fine sand. This is what it looks like with the bone graft in place where we took that tooth out. Now I'm going to place this membrane over the bone graft and suture it all shut. And that is going to sit and grow for about four to six months before you would place probably two implants in that site. Here's a perfect example of what a big bone graft looks like on a ridge. Now, normally all these bone particles would be cleaned up with some water, but you can see we screwed this membrane into place over the top of the bone graft, bulked it out a ton, and this will heal for about four, six, eight months before we'll place like probably one, two, probably two implants in this area. Okay, that's what it looks like all closed up. All the sutures are in, time to heal. Look how much wider it looks right here versus over here. We're trying to bulk this area up to get those implants in there. You can just see, that's what this whole course is about. It's called a guided bone regeneration and we're building up the bone versus how much thinner this ridge is over here. 